Today we have joining us in our studio, Will Bremridge, freelance portrait and lifestyle photographer. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we have with us Will Bremridge. You can find him on Twitter at Will Bremridge. Will, welcome to the studio, man. Good to How's have it going? you. Good to have you. Can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? We're going to put some of your work on the screen now, but uh, right. so um, you're five second pitch to <laughs> yeah i'm a, a london-based uh portrait and advertising lifestyle photographer uh, i shoot a lot of stuff portraits for magazines um uh, a little bit of advertising stuff for advertising agencies and marketing and pr agencies and uh and then bands singers uh and that's about it really anyone who wants their image promoting but mostly now for a commercial reason rather than just private bookings Right, so anything that kind of like falls in the portrait slash lifestyle category. Exactly, yeah. Perfect. Make, usually making people look cool is, is kind of yeah. a, a layman's way of, of putting it. You could do that for me? I hope so. That'd be almost It'd be impossible. embarrassing if I comment. <laughs> almost impossible to make me look cool. Um, well, we'd, well, thanks for coming to the studio. We just got like a couple questions. We'll do an uh, interview. It's probably 20, 30 minutes long is what, cool. we're, what our goal is for you guys watching it out there. And um, yeah, let's just start it off. Kind of tell us about how your your background. I know you started off with like snowboarding, mm -hmm. and um, tell us like your background and, and kind of the couple first couple of years. Yeah, I used to I used to travel around as kind of just a snowboarding bum with my friends. I left university where I did a degree in music, which I'm not really making any use of at the moment. And uh, and I lived in the French Alps. And then uh, a friend of mine lived in Colorado, who's from Scotland. And he was like, Oh, you got to come out. It's amazing out here. So we got jobs as chairlift operators. Nice. So I carried on snowboarding, did that for two years, and then got somehow, I think I had a friend, I've got a friend who's a photojournalist and lives in China now. And, uh, and his work, even though it was nothing like what I shoot now, it was the most inspiring stuff. I guess like, he was the one who gave me that bug that said, oh, I want to get an SLR camera. And, um, and then so I bought one out here and then started shooting all my friends snowboarding. And I had quite a few friends who were sponsored. And, uh, and I was in Colorado, which is like the, you know the mecca of snowboarding totally, yeah. if you know if not colorado then california and um and so i found it really easy just to go out to people and anyone who was great at snowboarding and i also had a ridiculously geeky bible of pro snowboarders names in my head so i knew i could recognize so many people even with goggles that were this big and hung low to look cool wow and um and and even just i could recognize the the sponsors that people had it was ridiculously geeky and i'm sure anyone who's into their snowboarding uh, and their photography, especially combined, will know exactly what that's like to know who everyone is. Um, so I didn't find it that difficult to go out to people and just be really vocal about it. I guess a little bit in, in being in America, the English accent helped a bit because it's yeah. a bit different. And it also sounds super polite as well. And, uh, and also everyone in Colorado is generally super high. So if you can, if you, <laughs> if you can, uh, if you can break through, yeah, if you can make a sentence last only three seconds rather than, rather than <laughs> 40, uh, then you can get your point across people to people you come across as kind of efficient. Um, and yet generally, if I wanted to speak to someone, I would, uh, I would make sure I knew what I wanted to say first rather than just like, hi, um, so yeah, I had that going for me and I went and just saw all these people training. So there were so many people in Colorado who are pro snowboarders who train there. So I just go up to them and say, hey, how's it going? Do you mind if I take some pictures? If you want, I can email them to you or to your team manager. Um, and back then it was a little bit, probably one or two years before, this was back in 2007. Okay. So it was probably one or two years before the whole digital SLR massive boom. Right. And. Uh, and so there were a lot of people on the mountain back then who, even though I was only shooting with a Canon 40D and a kit lens, not that kind of little one, a slightly big, like the 28 to 135. Yep. So it still looked pretty big. And I guess back then more people just judged you on how big your camera was because no one really, there they were so know. many less people who knew exactly what kind of camera gear that was. Um, so there were a lot of people who thought I looked quite official and would say, oh, who are you shooting for and stuff. Um, and so, uh, and so that's how it works. I guess it would be a little bit more difficult now. I guess, I think those magazines must have just absolutely, oh, sorry, the snowboarding magazines right, totally. must have so many kids sending them shots. It's ridiculous. And, uh, and I've realized back then just the best way to do it is just be nice to people and, and make yourself, uh, known or no, make yourself present, just present. available. Just yeah. Be there. Yeah. Just be there and meet people. Um, I wrote a little thing for, uh, for a web magazine about it the other day. Just say, they asked me how to become a snowboarding photographer, which is not even what I do anymore. But the recipe for doing that is exactly the same as the recipe for doing any other kind of photography. Just contact people, 
find out the names of the right people, be nice, and uh, and if you get hired for something, show up on time and get it done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't ever give someone a tiny reason to just find you unreliable. Exactly, and that's a huge thing. I mean, in the creative industry, like we're in, you know, like even it extends for everything, hair, makeup artists, you know, models, yeah. like you find someone who can't get their stuff together and generally you don't work with them again. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I went from there. I only did that for two seasons, uh, taking photographs uh, of snowboarding. And I realized more and more that I wasn't actually that interested in the action of snowboarding. I mean, like I love looking at big kind of panoramic action shots where, especially ones where you've got a huge scene and then you can just see that snowboarder somewhere in the distance totally. going huge. Um, but it was mainly the lifestyle stuff that I was obsessed with, especially the, in like the, the, the brands that could afford to release big book like catalogs every year, like yeah. Burton and DC. So I used to love their lifestyle stuff and their portrait stuff. And, uh, and there were a few photographers who, whose work I was obsessed with back then. Um, and, then uh, and then so I realized more and more that the actual snowboarding part of it wasn't that interesting to me anymore. It was, I just love snowboarding myself, but taking pictures right. of it doesn't really appeal to me that much. Um, but yeah, taking pictures of all those cool looking people who do snowboard was really fun. Yeah, Especially totally. when you've got such an amazing environment of kind of these big wooden uh, cabins and, and stuff like that. It was all really photogenic. So that was a kind of a good training ground for someone who's just picked up a camera rather than living, I don't know, if I was just at home and I bought mm -hmm. that camera, just yep. like everyone, everyone kind of sees their own home as just, well, I don't know what I can take pictures of here. Totally. But it was just an overload of inspiration. So taking like, knowing that about yourself and knowing what a big part of that like formed in your own photography, like what advice would you give other people who are kind of like, you know, earlier starting out, like, um, what was something that you could suggest to like how, how they could kind of jumpstart their career in a similar way that you, you did? I, th I don't, I don't really believe there is a jump start, really. I mean, unless, um, say, for example, someone comes from graphic design, so they're already really good with Photoshop. I've seen that happen mm -hmm. before. And uh, so I've seen guys take quite basic photographs but manipulate them amazingly because they already know how to use Photoshop. And I think that kind of, even if you come from graphics, that kind of knowledge of how a computer program works is yep. amazing. Um, but I think, don't just don't be in a rush to call yourself a professional photographer. I did it too early, and I cringe at the thought of, of the fact that within about four months I was not you know really not bragging about it but just kind of saying oh I work as a photographer when I wasn't really I was doing the odd job here and there and then having to temp in offices and work in retail and stuff um, so there's nothing wrong with calling yourself a photographer versus a professional photographer because as soon as right. you drop the word professional you're <laughs> yeah. holding yourself up to be judged by the art directors and editors of this world so and I mean nothing would be worse than meeting someone who you didn't realize was the art director for some huge clothing brand and and having more talk than you're worth so it's better to just shoot and shoot and shoot until you shoot well and then start telling people about it yeah yeah we were talking about earlier it's it's easy in photography to see where everyone lines up like yeah it's pretty easy to see who's good because yeah, you exactly. just look at their photos and be like, yeah, but I think good. I think one thing I notice is, especially on Facebook and stuff, because there's so many Facebook photography pages mm -hmm. and there's no problem with that. I don't find mine really does any, has any benefit because people who, like the art director for some London-based uh, magazine isn't going to find me on Facebook. Or right. if they do, they're still going to wait for me to find them. Um, so where you're shooting with, a, what is it, FHM coming uh, up soon? Yeah, I have a FHM shoot this week, and, uh, the uh, London version of F, well, it is F, still FHM. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize it was in this country, uh, at least anymore anyway. I think either we have it here or I've seen it abroad when traveling, but yeah. um, I, uh, <laughs> it's not the type of magazines that I subscribe to, but yeah. well, I, mean, I it's, know what they it's, are. It's a lot less. There are many uh, sluttier magazines than FHM. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's, a fairly, it's just a jokey kind of slightly rock and roll guys magazine, I guess. Um, but I, I actually don't know what I'm shooting yet. I haven't <laughs> been told. I was told on Friday. I'm back in the UK. It's a national holiday right now. So no one's at work today. So I'll find out. So I'll probably get an email about it while I'm on a plane home tomorrow. What you're actually going to be shooting. Yeah. And, and then the shoot's on Thursday. <laughs> that's awesome. It's ridiculous. So you said that a, a company like that, that's, they wouldn't find you on Facebook. So how did you get this particular job? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, I've shot for FHM twice before, so okay. it's better probably if I tell you how I originally did yeah, it. Yeah, let's go for that. Um, similar to another magazine that I work for, uh, I just found the best, the best way, because that was one of the first proper mainstream magazines I shot for. So I found the best way was just to find out the name of the art director, uh, send them an email, introduce yourself. And, uh, and back then I was kind of, I, I have a pretty thick skin now, but back then I was really defeatist. So as soon as an email doesn't come back 
I kind of thought, oh, well, maybe they've looked at my work and not liked it, but it's so rarely as personal as that. Right. Um, especially if you, you are confident about your own work and you can open a magazine and think, right, well, I've done stuff like that. I could do that, that, yeah, and I that. Can do that, that. I belong that. in this magazine. Exactly. So um, I was confident that I could get the job, but at first I was quite defeated, so I kind of left them alone a while. And then I got hired to shoot um, a snowboarding competition in Switzerland. So it was the British Snowboard Championships, but they hold it in Switzerland because we don't really have snowboarding. <laughs> not much. Um, we have some amazing snowboarders, just not that much snowboarding in the UK. And, um, and so out there, one of the journalists that was invited was the... Uh, editor of another magazine, and he was just been given. He'd just been given the job of editor of FHM. Oh, wow. yeah, he'd been brought in to kind of uh, rescue the magazine a little bit, and I think he really has. Um, so I met him, uh, kind of made semi friends with him, kept in touch, and then I noticed him tweet about how FHM were holding a, a big Wimbledon party for like Wimbledon tennis yep, yep. Uh, combined with Nike. So I just said, hey, let me know if you want me to come by and take some photos. I'll just do it for the price of a beer. And uh, I'll just do it if you give me a bit. Nice. And, um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm easy to please. And, um, and he was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And then he's, and without even being prompted, he actually found, you know, found me at the party. He was like, Will, I want to introduce you to our photo editor. Um, so I met her and I'll probably mention this again later, but I believe that five minutes face to, or 30 seconds face to face with anyone is worth like 5,000 emails. If you can have a conversation with, with someone by email, that's great and get some, some kind of rapport going with someone. But as soon as you've met someone in person, you can demonstrate a sense of humor, intelligence, mm -hmm. punctuality, or is it punctualism? One, ability to show up on time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, and just being efficient. And you, you, if you were gonna do that via email, that takes so much longer. Totally. And so, yeah, you can, and especially having a sense of humor, I believe people, if you can get on with someone and share a few jokes and they immediately start warming to you. Um, and so, yeah, that worked. And, and then, so that party happened and maybe like a month later, I just sent her an email going, hey, how's it going? Here's a couple of things I shot recently. Perfect. And, um, and then all of a sudden I got two jobs in a week. So you kind of went with like the soft, the soft invite, like you found an a easy way in. They yeah. didn't have to pay you the first time. Yeah. You, you just I wanted to meet them face to face. I don't generally believe in offering yourself out for free at all. Uh, right. But this was one that was most definitely directly going to lead to Going to lead somewhere. Yeah. Rather than just calling up a magazine going, I'll shoot for free. Right. Because it's, right. it's, you can't devalue yourself at all like that. That's like being a roofer or a plumber and saying, oh, I'll, I'll get you a new <laughs> yeah. toilet. I don't know you, but right. I'll, I'll, I'll get you a new free. toilet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you did it with the idea of creating those contacts, which were going to eventually lead to a job. Yeah. So I'm quite selective about anything I do for free, but once in a while something comes along which you'll do for like a nominal fee um, because it makes sense. It makes sense. It's going to lead to something else. And exactly. Yeah, I, I think that's a really great way to look at things. And I'll, I'll do the same thing. Um, you know, when I'm working with a client, sometimes I'll, I'll underprice myself a little bit because mm -hmm. I want to start that relationship. I want yeah. to get something going. And I'll know that, you know, if, if it does pretty well, um, that relationship could go on 10 years. And yeah. Really. Um, I've been more aggressive about it in the past. I, uh, I just, I mean, I've, one thing I've noticed is I, it's easy to put people who work for magazines and ad agencies on a pedestal and think, oh God, what can I do to impress them? Well, surely they've got people around them all the time. They must be so cool. They're generally pretty normal people, like really normal people, just like you or I. And, uh, and so it doesn't take much just to impress or just appeal to someone, which is why once I had the idea, when I was in America, I, uh, I sent a stack of extra large pizzas to a magazine office and with my portfolio printed on the nice. top and just said, any chance I can come in for a cup of coffee in the next week? And they were like, yeah, sure. Just feed people. You don't need to <laughs> buy someone awesome. a Ferrari. Just yeah. feed them. And also in the same way goes, if I get, if I get an interview, or I wouldn't I'd really say an interview, like a meeting to potentially shoot for a magazine or an agency, just show up with enough coffee to, to feed the likely three people you're, you're going to be meeting with or like a bag of donuts. It's amazing how much just appealing to someone's stomach gets you some attention. That's great advice. It's so, it's so simple. <laughs> you um, came today with some chips and salsa. Yeah, I, I thought maybe we shouldn't eat those here. <laughs> that would make a horrible noise on this, this little thing. Yeah, now the interview with Will, you won't be able to hear it. But, no. <laughs> but you'll get hungry. It was good, I promise. It was good. <laughs> um, well, that's, that's awesome. Really, really good advice. So a couple things that I've learned from you already is, um, you know, figure out a way where you can kind of like get, get in the door, make mm -hmm. that. Make that connection with the person, you know, that five seconds with them is really, yeah. really important. I mean, if I was to scale it down, I've been quite, I kind of talked about all kinds of things, mm -hmm. like the attention span of a goldfish, but um, I tend to have this email 
that's not always the same, but kind of a format of an email that I send out. And I or, and it's just me saying, say if it's the art director, if you were the art director yep. of, uh, of FHM and I'd never worked for them before, I just say, hey, how's it going? I hope you're having a good week or I hope your weekend was good. Um, it would be really great to grab five minutes of your time in the near future. Uh, I work in London as a commercial photographer. Uh, my previous clients include this handful of brands or magazines or whatever. Um, I hope uh, I hope I can get a chance to speak to you in the near future. And uh, and and I also say to save you the time looking through my website, I've attached a flyer with a little selection of my work on it. So that's really nice. And I reckon no matter how efficient your website is, there's this jinxing thing where when you want someone to look at something on the web, it doesn't work. Yeah. You know when you, you'd say to a friend, "Hey man, come and have a look at this video on YouTube," totally. and it buffers, like to just like one inch and then stops. Yeah. Um, it's and you're like, I promise there. it's going to be yeah. good. Stay excited. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I make it a little bit easier. So and also they can print that flyer out and then or just email that flyer to one of the other people at the at the company. That's great um, advice. And because sometimes I, I still find it confusing when people go, oh, can you show me some examples of your lifestyle work or your fashion work? And I just want to say, well, it's all on my website. Surely that is the most <laughs> the most obvious way of looking right. at the stuff that I've laid out neatly for everyone. But they still say, can you put together a PDF file of your work? So. Maybe a good idea putting that kind of thing together, even though it seems completely ridiculous. Right. Um, so yeah, and I sent this email out, and then if I don't get a reply within a week, I'll send it, I'll forward it to the person with a little extra note saying, hey, how's it going? I don't know if you had a chance to read this email, but it'd be really great to get some feedback from you. Hope you're having a good week. And, um, and usually on that second one, you get something back. I'll send a third one if it's someone I really want to speak to, yeah. uh, but I still try and remain as polite as possible. And usually I, you get a good feedback from people and say, hey, how's it going? Sorry for not replying the first time. Um, and all of a sudden you're sat having a coffee with them the next week. And it, usually those meetings last like 10 minutes, but it's still so important. It's better, much better than nothing. Yeah. And don't be ashamed when they don't call you the next week for a shoot. It will probably be a month or two later. And totally. Just, and to everyone I speak to, I always say, I hope you don't mind, but can I just can I just send you a few bits of my work? If I shoot anything interesting in the near future, can I just pop it in an email to you? And they say, yeah, definitely, definitely do that. That's awesome. I, I call it maintaining a constant presence. Mm -hmm. um, so I have, especially, I mean, so I've, I've probably contacted hundreds of agencies and magazines, and there's a bunch which I've even forgotten about, which I'll remember when looking through my sent items in my mail one day and go, oh crap, I should, I should follow up, I with, should this. Follow up yep. with this. And, um, but I definitely have a list of about 50 to 100 companies or art directors, especially, well, yeah, definitely particular people at these yep, companies. Exactly. Um, who I just send like, I try not to send a newsletter very often, but I'll just send them an email with a little flyer of recent work and go, hey, how's it going? Here's some stuff I've been doing recently. It's fairly relevant to the kind of things you guys do. Hope you're having a good week. That's it. <laughs> that little nice tag at it the end. It doesn't sound hard. Having a good week. Yeah. It's just being polite and efficient. And it took me a long time to realize that because I'm definitely someone who's got more too, too, too much energy to sit at the desk all day. Right. And I have to bully myself into it and write down when I'm going to have a break during the day so that I have all these targets to meet, which works really well. Um, but otherwise, you, you, if you don't write yourself a list of things to do and the list of people to email and mm -hmm. people to re-email, you'll sit in front of your computer all day like this, just playing with your website and watching funny videos yeah. of pigeons flying into trains and stuff. <laughs> um, or like Miley Cyrus, but with a goat dubbed over the top. That's one of my favorites at the moment. Oh, I gotta um, see that. Yeah, it's we'll good. put a link to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there. Um, Watch it down below. Uh, yeah, and uh, Taylor Swift as well. That one's good. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've lost track of where I was going. No worries. Yeah, so just maintaining main, that constant maintaining that constant presence. Yeah, um, that's and it becomes second nature. Similar to how people say, "Oh, I hate going to the gym," um, but as soon as you've done it for like two weeks and yeah. maintained that discipline for two weeks it becomes something you want to do rather than exactly um, yeah and as you can see I'm ripped because you're of that. totally ripped <laughs> it's amazing I feel intimidated just exactly here. yeah <laughs> um, so yeah that's how it works I find that's probably the main thing because I give I give lectures once in a while at universities around London because I've I've started uh, my career in exactly the same environment as these kids have in yeah. the environment of social media and immediate responses, you know, uh, with, there's no delay in anything that we do. You know, clients want your images the next day and, um, and you can generally provide that unless you, you're completely kind of jammed up with stuff to do. Right. And uh, so people expect you to be able to do that stuff as fast as you can. So there's no, I mean, it's exactly the same environment that these students 
um, that They're kind of growing up. Yeah, so it's yeah. not quite the same as getting in some 45-year-old photographer who grew up in the, in, the, in the film age and has a slightly different work ethic because it's what's worked. You know, it's what he started with and now he's so established that he doesn't need to change. Exactly. I mean, I've met people who don't even own a computer who are CEOs of companies and stuff, but you can't do that anymore. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that seems to be how it works. Yeah. And, and yeah, giving these lectures uh, is, oh man, I'm getting lost. Um, no worries. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's exactly the same environment. So it's I, the main thing that I teach is that uh, maintaining a constant presence, always being polite, mm -hmm. and uh, and just letting people know what you've been up to. Because yeah. another thing that's really important is everyone who works in a job where they hire photographers has done their job absolutely fine before you came along. Totally. So you, it's your responsibility to to get yourself noticed. But don't be, you know, don't don't beg people for anything right yeah be a professional about it like hey i thought you'd be really interested in cds um have a look and let me know if you know you need anything done in the next couple of weeks right rather than going oh, please have a look at these you'll love right. them it's like when i i sign up for like apple you know the computer manufacturer mm -hmm. i sign up for their newsletter like i am they, aware of them yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you've heard of them they make computers and stuff pretty yeah. cool company but uh you know they send out updates uh, into my mailbox but they're like they're, they're not begging me to buy their products. They're not no. like, oh, please look at us. They're just like, hey, I've got these great products. Take a look at them if you've got a second. Thanks exactly. for your time. And it works on every scale, whether it works you're on, a small yep. photographer in London or the biggest product producer of cool stuff. Exactly. So you're just doing the exact same thing Apple's doing, um, yeah. just with your own work. Say, hey, I just did these couple cool things. I, I think you might like them. Thank yeah. you for taking the time to look at them. Have a good day. And plus, you know, there are there are websites if you want to do it with a newsletter way, which I do because there are now so many people I email. So mm -hmm. I do send out a, a newsletter like every two or three months. Um, anything less, any, sorry, anything more often, you better have something really good to show people um, because it's just like people who are on your Facebook news feed who just tell you non nonstop about their babies. Right. They, you start <laughs> you just unsubscribing don't care. from that right. stuff. Um, so you've got to be quite tactful with it. And it also, that I use a, a website called MailChimp um, and it allows you to send newsletters out, but it also gives you the analytics of how many people are opening it, how That's many people really are nice. deleting it, how many people are unsubscribing. It seems to be going okay at the moment. Yeah, MailChimp is a good one. Um, if you guys are curious out there, uh, we use AWeber for, at, oh, yeah. here at Flurn, which we started with MailChimp. Um, we switched to AWeber. Um, I think their sign-up process is a little bit easier, but okay. either way, it's the same thing. Um, <laughs> I was just realizing as you're talking that your accent works for you in in the united states obviously like a little bit yeah but back home in london oh it's you, the same it's, it's nothing no it's completely the same yeah you don't sound like james bond in london no, you just sound, you just like, sound everyone like everyone else, else. <laughs> yeah so you getting jobs in london your your accent doesn't play anything for you no. you being from london doesn't play anything for you so I, I think it's easy you know maybe for for us to be like oh well he's he's english and you know of course he's so charming he must no, get all the there are plenty here, of charismatic, confident American people who get their jobs done very well. <laughs> in fact, that's the most important thing. Just be really polite and really confident. But not, you know, there's a difference between self-esteem and ego. There's right, just, you don't want to be cocky. Yeah, the ability to be able to walk up to someone and look them in the eye and shake, them hand, shake their hand and, uh, and ask them the exact questions that you want to be able to ask. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, so you're working totally freelance now. Like yeah. 100% freelance. Yeah. And um, we talked a little bit about getting an agent, and I know a lot of people, they think that uh, they're not getting the jobs now. In order to get the jobs, that's why you get an agent, but that's not necessarily true, is it? I actually, I actually don't know a huge amount about agents. I know that none of my fellow, fellow photographers who are on the same kind of level of their career as me have one. Uh, a couple that have them, but they are allowed to work outside of that agent as well. Okay. So once in a while they get, I mean, they use, I've got a friend who shoots interiors, and, uh, but he also shoots a lot of portraits, so he has an agent for shooting interiors, but everything else he gets himself. So he okay. only gets like an interior job every couple of months. So you can barely even call it an agent. It's almost like a, um, like a, just a receptionist who needs a little bit of commission. Right, right. totally. Who will um, help you get a few jobs every now and then. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's fact, in fact, it's just the equivalent of one of your friends helping you out now and again and giving you a little bit of money and saying, you've got to give me some beers for that. Totally. Um, and yeah, so I don't know a great deal about getting an agent. I'd quite like to have one, but not yet. I don't think that my work is as refined as I'd like it to be. I'd like to be able to walk into an agent's office and be like, there. And, and uh, what rather is than that? being like, you know, like someone right. going, I oh, kind of have a look at my portfolio. There is a little bit in there that's not quite up to speed, but in a couple right. of months, I'm getting my website redone and stuff. You don't want to um, be there, right? Yeah, you don't want to be that guy. You want to come in and have an agent. And what's what would be your goal? Let's say in, in a year, let's, uh, and when your portfolio is where you want it, um, and you do approach an agent with a portfolio you're very proud of, 
Um, what's your goal out of that? Um, I guess just to, uh, to be able to afford more candy and beer and, <laughs> no, than I do at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, pretty much uh, I'd like to be able to shoot. There's a handful of magazines I'd like to be able to shoot for, probably magazines that most people have heard of. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to be able to have a good rapport with those magazines and be known even more as a portrait photographer because I'm certainly not at the top of my game at all right. at the moment. Um, but I seem to be getting really good feedback from people and I've decided that even though those tiny little things are what make you just think, well, this is worth doing, this is why I'm doing this job. Um, so yeah, you've got to, uh, you've got, I've, God, I got lost again. Um, yeah, I want to shoot, okay, for GQ is a really yep, good let's example. Go for it. I'd yep. love to shoot for GQ. They're an exact example of the kind of people who publish portraits of celebrities. And I don't really care whether someone's famous or not, but it kind of helps if it's in your portfolio for getting oh, yeah. more and more high profile work. But they publish portraits of celebrities generally where the photographer has been given a kind of a spin on what, uh, like a kind of an idea of what they want to shoot. Yep. And then been given free reign to do something really cool. Um, so those are the guys I love. People, there are the people who shoot more serious work, like Norman Jean Roy and Annie Leibovitz, who mm -hmm. I love. But you know that they get a hugely free reign of, of how they shoot they do, something. Yeah. And then there's, um, there's other people, like there's a guy called Matthias Klamer. There's uh, Gavin Bond. They're two really big uh, photographers who shoot for GQ. Um, I love their work because it is just really fun portraits of celebrities. I'm not really that big into fashion. I like the, and I'm not really that big into shooting women looking really uh, moody and sexy. I like right. everything to have quite a f happy spin to it. Right. So that, that kind of plays with your entire brand. Like you, as a person, you're kind of like the happy, fun guy who wants to just come out and, you know, like... I like the photograph. idea of having a portfolio, which is really uplifting, where people yeah. just look and go, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Rather yeah. than kind of, oh, you know, she's hot. Yeah. Um, which is just bores the hell out of me. Right. So it, it kind of it speaks to me that like who you are as a person uh, kind of dictates what you like. Yeah. in your photography and what you want to strive to be. Exactly, yeah. So I think that's very true. So yeah, in, in you said two years, didn't you? Yeah, let's um, see. I'd like to be shooting more detailed advertising stuff. Um, I've shot some advertising stuff, but it's not necessarily always with a brand or a, a type of shot that you're really, really interested in. So I'd like to be shooting more stuff that kind of crosses over into fashion, but it's more kind of outdoors stuff and or even kind of a fashion shoot, but it's more to do with like a, an airline or a, it's just lifestyle, like a nice, really, right. really smart lifestyle photography, which kind of is a little bit like fashion photography, but has a bit more of a story, I guess. Um, and, and sorry, I was going to say, I don't yeah. care. I don't really, I'm not one of those people who kind of thinks, oh, that's too commercial. That's selling yourself out. Mm -hmm. It's it's a job. Um, and that's, you know, you can't shoot exactly what you want all the time. You right. just got to find something that you absolutely love. And uh, well, you shoot exactly what you want all the time. I do shoot exactly but, what I want all the time. <laughs> exactly. It's great. But yeah, um, you, you've got to find a way of, of making it all work. And not every art director is going to love every shot you take uh, if you do exactly what you want rather than exactly kind of a slightly more broad spectrum of the kind of things that you like. Um, sorry, the kind of things that magazines like. Exactly. Yeah. So don't just don't be too, uh, too much of a, I don't know how you would put it. Don't, uh, prima don't, donna or whatever. Yeah, don't be too much of a prima donna over yeah. If you say, I mean, there are so many art directors who look at stuff and, and you know, like that classic Terry Richardson shots, uh, those classic Terry, Terry Richardson shots where you've just got a model on a white wall with yep. a bit of drop shadow shot right in the face with a flash. And, uh, but it's amazing how if you don't have something like that in your portfolio, but you want to shoot, you, you know, you'd quite happily take that job. How many art directors will go, oh, but he hasn't shot anything like that, so he probably can't. But right. a photographer would want to go, well, that's easy. Yeah, that's, um, I can do that any you day. Know, not easy, but it's, it's simple. And, uh, but I have a couple of shots like that in my portfolio because not all art directors are photographers. So not all art directors can read between the lines. And, that's um, a good point. And, and think, oh, well, he shot that picture of that person doing this with probably about six flashes. So I'm, I've no doubt in my mind that he, <laughs> he can could do use that. one. Yeah, he could <laughs> use one and a wall. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, so it's important to try and get out of the mindset of being just this really technical photographer um, and get in the mindset of someone who just wants someone who takes great shots. Um, and if that person you want to you want to get in the mind of not get in the mind of, if you want the attention of exactly. is perhaps the art director of GQ then we all know that GQ has a fair few shots of people on white walls shot probably even one flash. Um, so I've, had a, I've got a few of those on my website. And the same goes for a few, bunch of other styles as well. And I wouldn't say it's the case of, uh, it's definitely not a case of just sacrificing your own style for everyone else's style to right. fit in. You know, there's a, you're, still, you're still creating shots along a certain vibe all right. the time that people recognize as being yours. 
You want to find those. that medium between yeah. like, okay, here's the style that I know an art director is going to appreciate, and here's my style. Exactly. Let's, let's pull them together. I can sell them something that's still going to be a part of me, but I know they're going to want it. Exactly. Too. You can't be you can't be really tight with all the stuff that you shoot and think, oh, well, that's not that's not quite what I like. That's not quite what I like. I mean, obviously, you can. Most people can shoot a version of what they like under every style. Right. I think so. Just try and try and fit something in that you know would appeal to that art director who doesn't know that what that thing is is easy. Right. Or you know, is there a certain <laughs> yeah. level of difficulty because they don't think about what's hard. An art director would never call me and go, "I want you to shoot something really hard." Right. You know, <laughs> they would just seven they ring know. flashes, yeah. none of which are on a camera, and uh, and I want you to do it uh, in the dark. Yeah. You know, underwater. <laughs> yeah, at gunpoint. Um, it's not like that. They don't. A lot. Most art directors don't have a clue how technical it is to shoot certain things, and they'll think that one thing looks really detailed, um, and another thing looks really simple. But in reality, maybe it's technically the other speaking, way around. it's the other yeah. way around. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, don't hold back on just opening your horizons a bit on your totally. portfolio. And you, I mean, as a freelance photographer, I mean, you love photography, obviously. You wouldn't be doing it if you didn't, but it's your job also. Yeah. So you have to you have to treat it like a job. Exactly. Can you talk about that for well, a Well, I do. There's a hell of a lot of work I do that isn't on my website. And I go around the country all the time doing doing shoots. As for Like, I have a couple of clients who book me for about four or five jobs a month. And... Um, I hope they don't hate me for saying this, but it's not the most interesting work. I think they'd even agree that it's fairly basic work um, and it doesn't really belong on my portfolio given that what I want to be known for is a portrait and lifestyle photographer. But I do it because, because it pays it's the bills. It's your job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can also do that work. You know, it's, right. not, it's not particularly difficult work and it's not outside of my horizons. It's, not, it's outside of my kind of, uh, whatever you call it, skill level. Yep. Um, but uh, I can do it, so why not? And I think exactly. you'll find that Almost every photographer, apart from the guys who are absolutely at the top, are all doing bits of work which they don't tell you about. Yeah, I not, think you're not totally because right. it's dirty, because it's just not interesting. It, yeah, and you don't. Um, I was just reading an article yesterday about uh, portfolios, and they say you know you don't want to publish everything. You no. if you publish your most interesting work, people think that everything you shoot is yeah, interesting. Exactly. So uh, I think there's a really. And can you talk about that actually with your own work, like that selection process, like? Oh, I'm still in that kind of childish mindset where every time I do a shoot, the best shot from that shoot gets shown. Yeah, okay. Um, but then occasionally I'll do a shoot, uh, especially if it's a portrait of, say, a businessman for a little uh, business magazine or something. Um, I may really like the shot, but it's, uh, it might not just quite be on, uh, down, along the same lines of what I want to be known for. Um, so I, I won't be in too much of a rush to show those ones off. Once in a while, they'll be a really cool right. one, especially if that businessman actually turns out to be really eccentric and fun. Um, so there's a few um, a few jobs I do that are portrait jobs, but I don't show them off too much. Maybe you can um, put them on Facebook, yeah. but not necessarily your portfolio. Or yeah, or site. your blog or something like that, or your right. Tumblr, or whatever, or Twitter. Um, but I wouldn't. I see. I see when I flick through Flickr, especially, you get guys who have uploaded almost exactly the same shot, but a hundred of them. Yeah. And uh, and I think that's such a bad idea. I think from any shoot, maximum amount of images, unless it's a series, mm -hmm. uh, should be three. I reckon. Totally. Show off three shots. Unless they're totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I uh, I definitely try to not show everything I shoot. Yeah, I think that's solid advice. Um, we're almost done here. The last couple questions I want to ask you. I want to ask you. Um, Knowing everything you know now, um, what what are some of the uh, things you wish you would have done? Maybe like <laughs> some mistakes you've made along the way. Okay. And then also tell everyone uh, who's watching this, uh, what are some of the best things that you've done? So like, uh, we'll start with the mistakes first. Oh, yeah, start with the mistakes while yeah. I try and think of something really good. Um, <laughs> Uh, I kind of, when I got into photography, I think like a lot of people, there are a lot of people who are artistic but not business minded at all. And I'm now getting much more business minded. So I spent a good couple of years just not really knowing what I was supposed to do. You know, and I'd, I worked in retail and people would come in with a big SLR um, and just because right, it was in a touristy part of London, I'd be like, oh, that guy with a camera. And, uh, and then I realized how incredibly sad that is and that it should just be an inspiration to go out and get what you want. And so it took me a while to realize how much work it takes uh, and how much time you have to spend at a laptop on the phone uh, going to different events and meeting people and uh, and you've got to you've 100 percent got to come up with a plan you can't sit at home and hope that someone comes across your website on google or facebook or, or anything like that and uh and just thinks oh i'll make him the next big thing yeah. it just doesn't work <laughs> it takes and even the magazines that i shoot for regularly i still have to remind them that i still exist because they have 20 other people who shoot totally and 
So yeah, it's hard work. And, and my dad always told me that looking for a job is a full-time job. And if you're freelance, then you're always looking for a job. So if you're not out <laughs> shooting, sit at your laptop from nine to five minimum and, and come up with a plan. And if you can write a list of what you're gonna do that day, that helps even more, because then it will stop you from just being on Facebook all day. Yeah, so it sounds like you made the mistake of just kind of hoping people were going to come to you and then just you figured it out. Just extremely naive. Yeah. Just so naive, just thinking, oh, you know, when, when is this person going to call me and, and book me for a job where it, yeah. doesn't, it just doesn't work like that. And also naive about the quality of the work that I was producing when I started out. I mean, everyone looks, I think now that, I, th I think when you start out, the little kind of buffer zone between when you shoot something and then you realize you don't like it anymore is like two months. But when you get a bit better, it may be, it could maybe be like two years. Mm -hmm. You could think, oh, I don't know if I know, need that in my portfolio anymore. Um, or you realize that no one's commented on it in Flickr. So you yeah. kind of think, <laughs> okay, maybe I just yeah. thought it was cool. Maybe I liked it, no one else did. Exactly. So yeah, I, uh, I think I was a bit naive about how my photography should look and how, how just much more of a well-oiled machine my business should be. Or, or even just the fact that I had to come up with some sort of business. Yeah, you had I was to just, be you know, a business. Yeah, and nothing's a bigger kick up the arse than when you tell some hot girl that you're a photographer, but when in the back of your mind, you know you're not really. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, or the back of the mind, you just know that that's not your real job and that you have another job um, that you hate. You know, that's a, such a great kick up the arse to go and actually work hard. And I, I did, I worked, I, when I moved to London, I worked in a shop for 10 months and that was, a good five months too much more than I should have stayed and then I did temping in offices just like if you've seen that tv show the office it was yeah. just like that just monotony all day just photocopying stuff for people um and uh, and that was the last straw I just thought this has got to stop so I quit and properly jumped in the deep end and just got really scared and I got to a couple of bits where I was so close to being on the phone to my old man just going can I have some money um, <laughs> yeah. which you know I'm 29 so I don't really ever want to do that again um, and so, uh, yeah, anyway, going back to that, I just realized I had to work hard and I dropped myself in the deep end. And that I think is the point where you really do go and get the work because you've got no other choice. There's no other choice. Yeah. yeah. If that can of beans that you'll want to have for dinner or hopefully something nicer, um, <laughs> isn't going to come until you get some photography work, then that's the best motivation. You'll get the work. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. If you're forced to do something, yeah. you'll do it. You'll find Oh, here's a way. an interesting thing I, I realized that I think most people haven't even thought about. If you've got more than 200 Facebook friends and you're an adult, look through your Facebook friends and look at what jobs all your friends do or friends of friends. And all of a sudden you realize you've made a list of minimum 20 people who might work for a company that need at least headshots done. That's brilliant. Um, it's ridiculous how resourceful Facebook is. And I don't even mean business pages, just you'll see someone comment on someone's status and it will say, Derek Rogers works uh, um, in PR for Adidas or Adidas as we call it in the yeah. UK. And, and you can think, well, why, what's to stop me from contacting them? Maybe send them a message saying, I'm really sorry for contacting you on Facebook. Right. But I noticed that you work for, uh, for Adidas. And, uh, <laughs> nice. And uh, yeah, and, um, and then there you go. And there's so many people like that. Yeah, that's a brilliant piece of advice. I think that's probably the best, uh, the best out of, uh, you know, contacting your friends who already have those contacts. And, yeah, you know. I filled an entire week of work by going on LinkedIn and writing Art Director London. And I must have come up with about 800 names of people. And I put them in a spreadsheet and then worked on, I would, for most companies, I'd try and find out uh, an art director, a creative director, uh, maybe a publisher, and, and uh, editors or CEOs. I'd always, I'll even try the CEO nice. just for fun. Um, and then, so you've got kind of, you know, try and you'll come up with every day. I could keep going, just going on LinkedIn and writing something like Art Director London. I'll still get different people every time. And you've made a massive list of people who you could contact. Obviously, London is a huge city, right. but Chicago is pretty massive as well. Um, as long as you don't, as long as, you know, just use your nearest big town and use that as the place you would say that you are a photographer from and work from there and then branch out and out and out. That's brilliant. So the other day I've decided I wanted to do some shoots for in-flight magazines because mm -hmm. I realized it's one of the one of the only magazine fields that's not dying out because there's always going to be a market for right. a magazine on the plane. And uh, and I found out the name of the major publisher of in-flight magazines in the world just by tearing a page out of the last flight I went on to Prague uh, and found that little bit of a magazine that says what the editor's called and the art director and stuff. So I just tore that out put it in my pocket and went home and found out that that company that published that magazine published almost every other one. Wow. Um, 
So I made, I probably, I, didn't, I wouldn't even say I worked that hard at doing this. I, did, I probably spent, spent two hours doing it and they showed all the magazines on the website and some of them did actually say what the editor was called. And then the harder bit is trying to find out the email format for that company, whether it's like first name dot last name and the bigger the company, the harder they make it because they'll, different people at the, in the company will have a different email yep. format. But it's always possible. For example, I mean, this is quite funny. You, if you call up a company and, and you get the receptionist and you say, I always try and be really confident about it. Say the, say the art director is called Dave Matthews. Um, he's a really famous guy, isn't he? Dave Matthews. Singer, okay, let's yeah. go with Dave Williams. <laughs> Dave Williams. And, um, <laughs> try and speak to Dave Matthews, man, please. Um, yeah, say the art director is called Dave Williams and I'll call and I'll get the receptionist and I'll say, hi, I'm just trying to pop an email to David Williams. Um, can you remind me if it's first name, dot last name or just first name? And you say it like you've already spoken to right. them before. And they're like, oh, okay, it's first name. Um, and then sometimes they go, can I ask who it is? And I say, oh, my name's Will. I work as a commercial photographer. Um, I just wanted to have a quick chat with him. And then sometimes the more kind of savvy receptionists or, you know, the ones that have been trained to be a bit harsh um, will say, oh, OK, um, doesn't sound like you've got a meeting booked with them or anything like that. Or um, do you mind sending an email to me and I'll, I'll, send, I'll forward it on to him. And then they'll say, oh, well, my name is Sarah Dot. Matthews and you go oh thanks very much yeah. because it's obviously going to be the same, same structure for him. yeah but I won't be really cocky and say that I'll just say thanks very much and then just use the same format for that guy <laughs> that's brilliant yeah you can catch people out pretty easily and it all again just goes back to being confident about it so if you say it like you've spoken to them before then then the chances are you'll be able to make someone slip up and say it and also because no one is off the radar with the guys if you're a professional or anything nowadays right. just google that person's that company Google and find out like the names of five people at that company and Google their names. They'll have been written about in a blog or some business update or a Twitter page and there'll be the email format there. Um, so sometimes I've got friends who can get them faster because they just work in that industry. But if I have to do it from scratch, I know it will only take me five minutes per company. That's amazing. So it's still, it's not like a case of having any kind of helping hand. It's just sitting with a laptop. Um, just doing the work. And just doing the work hunting people down yeah start nice. at facebook stalking yeah start at facebook and then work to linkedin um i'm trying to think of anywhere else and just have a look around twitter as well just i mean mm -hmm. just be open-minded with twitter and see things coming in and see you'll always get especially if you um if you go on to say the twitter page of some big advertising agency or some tv show or something you will get people following it and commenting on it that are in similar roles, like creative roles, mm -hmm. uh, roles to do with booking people, talent booking, um, uh, and people who run agencies, whether it's an agency that, that uh, looks after celebrities or an agency that does marketing, PR, advertising. Um, all of a sudden, if you kind of open your eyes a little bit more, there are so many people you can contact, and even just people who, uh, who can just point you in the right direction. So you can even ask people, email people just to ask them a couple of friendly questions rather than because you want You want them. a job from yeah, them. Yeah, you want a job from them. In fact, that's sometimes a good way to go. Just take the, take the nice kind of, hi, I was just wondering if I could get a little bit of advice from you thing. That's Especially perfect. when you're starting out. Yeah. Imagine being able to email the art director from GQ when you're starting out and saying, can you have a look at my photos? I know that I'm not, I'm not trying to get work from you. I just love your feedback. Just you know, two lines of feedback about three pictures. Um, and, uh, and you never know, they might be just leaning back in their chair, eating a bag of chips and just think, oh, maybe I'll, I'll just reply to that guy. Yeah, you why know, not? You know, what way to go? You actually had the guts to email me, yeah. so, so let's do it. <laughs> right on. Yeah, Will? there's no harm in asking questions to no. anyone and that's how it works. Be nice, ask questions. Um, Take some balls, right? Yeah. Oh, and whenever you meet, this could go on forever, by the way. Whenever you meet someone, just send them an email saying, it was great to meet you. Hopefully we can chat a, a bit more about this. Yeah. yeah, follow up everything. That's it. That's perfect. Be nice, be persistent, mm -hmm. follow up. Oh yeah, and just just look at other people's photography. The people at the top, not the guy next door who yeah. shoots bands, okay. <laughs> yeah, make right. sure you look at the best work and try and aim for that rather than the work that's, you know, kind of good. Yeah, I totally agree. It, you're gonna be harder on yourself because of it, but it's a good thing. Yeah, I give myself this kind of badly worded lecture every week as well. Yeah. And whenever I kind of feel a bit down and out and I haven't got any bookings for the next two weeks, which is usually normal because they come in kind of three days before, um, I kind of just remind myself what I tell other people in this exact situation and then it picks me up a bit. That's perfect. I'm luckily one of those people who doesn't get in a bad mood for more than about 10 minutes. And it's usually because I'm just hungry. <laughs> I'm trying to park my car like parallel parking right. while hungry. That's, that's the worst situation <laughs> to be in. No, I'm totally right there with you. Yeah. Well, it's been awesome having you on. 
Thank you so thanks. much. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. You can check out Will at willbephoto.com and also Twitter at Will Bremridge. Check his work out. He's amazing, and uh, give him a chat. He knows his stuff.